A pleasant good morning, my people, my people, my people, my people. My name is Alan Palmer, St. Vincent and the Grenadines' favorite and most hated son. I thank you for looking at this video, whether you're watching it on the live or on the replay. I want you to share this video, share it on your page, share it on a friend's page, share it in a room, share it in a group, and when you share it, tag someone in today. We are going to discuss the enslavement of the black community, a real and frightening phenomenon. Let me take about a minute and invite a few people to watch this video. As Mr. Age, Errol Rose, tell us to get on our knees. Listen to Mr. Rose as he speaks to us on behalf of the Mosai. I think that is it. When everything else fails, prayer is all we got. My people, my name is Alan Palmer, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, favorite and most hated son, the diaspora machismo. Today, let me just remind you if you're going to hang out with me for the next couple of minutes, I would like you for you to share this video. Share it on your page, share it in a friend, on a friend's page, share it in a room, share it in a group, and when you share it, please tag someone in it. Our topic today is the re-enslavement of the black community, a frightening and real phenomenon. Let us approach the throne of the Most High as we thank him for this opportunity to come before his people and to speak to his people. Holy love, nice to have you. I hope you hang on to me for the next couple of minutes. Now, oh great supreme and sovereign Most High, Father, as I come before you today, to speak in this topic, the re-enslavement of the black community, a true and frightening phenomenon. Yahweh, I ask that in your infinite mercies, that you will put only the things that you place upon my heart, upon my lips. And if I am instrumental in causing confusion in anyone, let your Holy Spirit go with my words and let your Holy Spirit lend clarity where I would have lent confusion. In Yahusha's name I say, let it be done. People, our scripture reading today is coming from 1 Samuel 16, 14. That is 1 Samuel 16, chapter 16, verse 14. Let me encourage you to get your Bible, get your notepad and, notepad, and get your pen and make a record of what I say here and go back and review it. So our scripture reading is 1 Samuel 16, 14, and it says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit troubled him. The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit troubled him. People, let me explain this scripture reading for you. This scripture reading was taken from 1 Samuel. Hey Doug, how are you man? Blessed, blessed Wednesday to you. This scripture reading was taken from 1 Samuel, chapter 16, and, but it stretched back to the beginning of the book of Samuel. You see what happened? During this course of Israelites' history, Israelites, the Israelites or Israel was led by King Saul. 
Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin, the least of the 12th tribe of Israel. Saul was from also a very poor family, one of the poorest family in the tribe of Benjamin. And Saul was the youngest in that family. So what you see here, the Most High decided to anoint Saul, Saul as king of Israel and give him the authority that a king have. So here we see Saul was the least of the, of the tribe of Benjamin, which, of, which was the least of the tribes. He was from the poorest family and he was the last in the poorest family. So he was the least among the entire nation of Israel. The Most High had a very important mission that Saul must accomplish because when Israel came out of Egypt, the Amalekites attacked them prematurely and the Most High had vowed then to Moses that he is going to destroy the Amalekites. When Israel is settled and becomes strong and can defeat the Amalekites. So the Most High's prophet Samuel went to Saul with a message from the Most High. He said, Saul, when you were the least of the least, the Most High chose you to be king over his people Israel. The Most High has a very important job for you to do. He wants you to go and wage a war against the Amalekite. This is chapter 15 of 1 Samuel and when you go against the Amalekite your objective there is to destroy every Amalekite and everything that they have the Most High went into the tales and so did his prophet Samuel Samuel told Saul kill every man woman child Sucklings and infants, donkey and oxen, everything, kill everything. Saul went out. He fought against the Amalekite. He was able to destroy, the, defeat the Amalekite. He killed everything except for King Agog and the best sheep and the best oxen. Totally contrary to the instructions the Most High gave him. So when Samuel, the Most High prophet, went to the army, he hear all the bleeping of the sheep. And when he inquired, Saul told him, I did just as the Most High said. I killed everything except for the king and for the best sheep and oxen. And those sheep and oxen, we save them so that we can sacrifice to the Most High. Saul went in complete disobedience to the instruction that the Most High gave him. The Most High instruction to Saul was for him to destroy all of the Amalekites and everything that they owned. But yet, he spared the king Agog and the best sheep and oxen and he claimed that he's going to use them to sacrifice to the Most High. So with that, the Most High declared to Samuel, his prophet, tell Saul, I am going to take my kingdom out of his hands. Not only am I going to take the kingdom out of his hands, I am going to abandon him. So when we read in Samuel 16, 1 Samuel 16, 14, that the spirit of the Most High leaves Saul and an evil spirit troubled him. What we see happening here is that the Most High had withdrawn his Holy Spirit from Saul. And now because he was unoccupied by the Holy Spirit of the Most High, what happened? An evil spirit 
Now take the Holy Spirit place. If we go to Matthew uh, chapter 43, Matthew chapter 8, I think it's 43, yes. Let me make sure. Lest I go totally off, off track. Okay, if you go to um, Matthew 12 to 12, 22. It told, it, it detailed a story there. That a young man was blind and dumb and possessed with devils. He came upon Yahweh, aka Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ cast out the devil. And when the devils were gone, he regained his sight and his hearing. In Matthew chapter 8, Verse 28, a story is outlined here where two men that was first that had that were demon possessed meet the son of the Most High, Yahweh, aka Jesus Christ, and shouted to him, What have we to do with you, O Yahweh, aka Jesus Christ, thou Son of God? And the son of the Most High, Yahweh, aka Jesus Christ, cast these demons out of these two men. Hear that? The helicopter, LAPD. Anytime I'm doing a sermon, they fly over to give me a warning, like if I'm afraid of them. Not afraid of them. And there is a story in Mark chapter 5 that started at verse 3. Where, the, where Yahusha, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, met an unclean spirit that dwelt with, among the tombs. He was a strong man, and no man can restrain him. And when they bung him with feathers and train, he was so strong that he was able to break the fetters and the train. And break them into pieces. Yahweh, aka Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High, actually cast out the demons out of this man also. People. When we go to Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Let us find it here. And the Most High Son, Yahusha, is making a very important point in Matthew 12, 43 that we should pay attention to. Matthew chapter 12, 12, 43. Okay. You see, after he cast out the spirit and the, the, the scribe and the Pharisees came and attacked him, this is what he said to them. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and find none. Then he says, I will return to the house from which I came. And when I come, he finds it empty, swept, and in order. Then he goes, and he takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and he enters the dwelling. And the last state, the last state of a man is worse than his first. So shall it be with this wicked generation. What Yahweh, aka Jesus Christ, the Most High Son, is saying here is that we are capable of being possessed 
by evil spirits and demons. Right? And from the text that I've just read, it shows that there are different level of demon possession. Now, many of us read the Bible. And we read the Bible with a preconceived mindset. We read the Bible with, with the things that we were taught and the things that we were told in our minds. And no matter how much time we read the Bible, no matter how much the realities of the Bible strike us, we ignore the Holy Spirit, we ignore the realities that we came upon, and we ignore the truth why? Because we went in reading the Bible with a preconceived notion, with a particular thought, with a particular school of training in our minds. And we go into the Bible looking to qualify that which we thought we knew and that which we were taught and that which we understood from someone else teaching us. And we ignore the realities of the Bible. We revolt, we revolt back to that which we were told or which we were taught. And this is commonplace with the Israelites, especially Israelites who are Christians. We ignore all of the scriptural texts and we said, we said to ourselves and we said to our the people we come into contact with that the God we serve is a God of love which is true and we say that the God of love loves everyone and he loves everyone the same but all through the scriptures we see the same God of love who loves everyone declared all through the scriptures in every book of the Bible the most high the creator of heaven and earth and everything that dwells therein the creator of the very existence of existence declared his undying love commitment and faithfulness to the Israelites On the opposite spectrum, he declared in Malachi chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, that he hates the Edomites and he will hate the Edomites forever. And the Edomites are the Caucasians. But yet, we go about and we tell everyone that we come into contact with, including the Caucasians, that the Most High love everyone and he loves everyone the same we refuse to realize that the most high has a favorite in the race of the people on the earth we refuse to acknowledge that the bible is a book from the most high that deals with the most high love for a particular race or I should say the most high extreme love for a particular race the Israelites and the most high hatred for a particular race the Caucasians that is the reality of the Bible you cannot go against it if you go against what is written in the most high words you're going against God In Isaiah 19.25, listen what the Most High says. Bless be Egypt, my people, and the Assyrians, my handiwork. Yet, when Israel was in Egypt, 
and the Egyptian oppressed the Israelites. Those people who the Most High have pronounced his blessing on ever since the creation of the world, Egypt. The same people who the Most High call his people Egypt. When they oppressed the Israelites, the Most High rained down tons of plagues upon the entire Egyptian community. And the Israelites, which were also living in Egypt, never experienced those plagues. He led Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand. He led them through the Red Sea. And when the Egyptian, the Egyptians, the people who the Mosai loves, went and pursued the Israelites, he allowed the city to close and destroyed the entire Israelite army. That is the reality. So it shows that also, although the Most High declared that Egypt is his people and they are blessed, he favors the Israelites over the Egyptian. That is just the reality. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to hear it or not, the reality will never change from being what it is. People, we have to come to the realization that the scriptures is the most high words to man. Even the Caucasians, who the most high declared hate for acknowledge and accept that the Holy, the Bible or the scriptures is the word of the one true living omnipotent and all powerful God they accept that and they had an opportunity to alter the scriptures and create the Bible and these things is what they leave back in the Bible but yet the people of the Most High, the Israelites, refuse to accept that what is outlined here is the truth. Remember our topic for today, the re-enslavement of the black community, a real and frightening phenomenon. People now that have laid the groundwork. Let me break it down to you. There are so much things that was taken out of the scriptures. Things we ought to know that we don't know because the Edomites, the Caucasians, take them out of the scriptures and created the Bible. They were not just satisfied to take them out of the scriptures. The rest things, they locked them away behind closed doors for many centuries. So what do the most high people do when they come to a situation where there is a, a situation that they don't understand? We need to go to the most high. Where am I going with this? When I was a very young child, I saw a movie can't remember the movie's name, but I can remember a particular scene in the movie. And the movie dealt with the operation of Haitian witchcraft or voodoo. And in this movie, there was a particular victim of voodoo, where a voodoo doctor put a spell on him and chucked him with a pin and every time the voodoo doctor or the voodoo priest whatever he's called inflict pain upon the doll the man 
who he put the spell on experienced the infliction of the pain that was meted out on him. This thing stuck, stuck with me from a child even into adulthood. I always thought about that. I know somehow I knew that this could never happen to me. But it stuck with me and it made an indelible impression on my mind. I knew that this was real, but I didn't understand how this thing could probably happen. Fast forward. I'm an adult, I'm living in New York City. I'm conducting a little business on Flatbush Avenue. Flatbush and Church Avenue. And from conducting that business, the opposition I got, I got to understand and to realize that there are people who have access to demons, spirits, and devils, and uses these demons, spirits, and devils to accomplish their personal vendettas. I told you this story many times. I'm not going to it today. Let's fast forward again. I came to California. And a lot of things came into perspective. I noticed that when I befriend a black man or woman in California, very soon, certain people will contact them. And they will get them to betray me and try to cause me physical and other hurts. I was wondering, I have never met a group of black people that operates like this in this manner in my entire life. What kind of people are these? I ask myself. There is no exception. Everyone I met black, Mexican, they all have the same agenda. I just could not understand it. I just could not figure it out. So I start reading my Bible, I start praying, and then one day I spoke to the Most High, and I asked the Most High to show me what this and these people are all about. How come strong, intelligent black men can become so fickle and betray a friendship for absolutely no reason? Not only betray a friendship, but try to mislead those who they call their friends into a place where they can be injured financially, socially, and physically and want, once the most I says these people are slaves these people are slaves I didn't understand what he means so I inquired further I said most I what do you mean that these people are slaves he turned me to the book of 4 Samuel chapter 16 verse 14 where was the scripture reading where the spirit of the most high leaves Saul and devils possessed him but you see the most high does things in sequence when he wants to reveal something to you had it not been for the New York experience I would have not been able to put the California experience into perspective. So when the Moses I told me these people were slaves, and he told me to first Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. And I reflect to the fact that there are people who control devils, demons, and unclean spirits and use them for their purpose. 
I conclude as the Most High would have directed me that when a people go contrary to the Most High and His Spirit leave them and demons possess them, He who control those demons control the person. The next thing I wanted to, re to, to know and the next thing I inquired about, Father, how does one put themselves in a situation where you will take away your Holy Spirit from them? He said, look at what Saul did. Saul, one of my leaders, the leader of my people, refused to honor me. And entice an entire nation to go against me. That is one of the greatest betrayal you can do when you are in control or in custody. Or are given leadership over the most high people. See, that is one way. He said, go to, 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 go to the Bible. And when you read in the Bible, anything, any punishment in the Bible has death associated with it. For one opportunity of an infringement, that is also a reason for me to remove my spirit from you. And then I read, Leviticus 20, 13. If a man will lie with a man as he would lie with a woman, he have committed an abomination, he must be put to death and his blood shall be on his own hands. Same with the woman. And realize that the abomination of homosexuality is one of the things that the Most High will take away the spirit of his spirit from and demons will then take possession of you. And then I re read, I think it was in Deuteronomy, yes, Moses speaking to the people of Israel. He says, if a man caused a woman who is with child to lose her child in her pregnancy if it is found that that man acted maliciously then he must be put to death so if a man must be put to death to cause the death of an unborn child in a pregnant woman what are the punishment for the woman who lift up her hands of violence against her unborn child. Have to be dead. Because it is a greater crime against the unborn to have its own mother. To cause its slaughter even before it see the first light of day. So I realize that abortion was also one of the things when we take part in, the Most High removes his hands from us and devils and demons possess us. People, I also read in the Holy Scriptures that if a man rapes a woman and she does not sound an alarm that man and that woman must be put to death so therefore it is the obligation of a rape victim to sound the alarm for two reasons 
The first reason is to warn the community that there is a person within our midst who refused to honor the laws of the Most High, who refused to honor the law of state, and is willing to rape the brothers and the sisters. Now, once that alarm is raised, everyone can look out for him and he can get the rightful punishment, which is death, to ensure that this never happened and the Israelite community is never traumatized in this manner again. So we, I realize that when a woman is raped and she refuses to sound the alarm and she keep it quiet and she aids and abets her rapist to go on and rape more people, it's a reason for death because she didn't sound the alarm she didn't warn her community that this kind of people are in our midst so that the community can deal with them in the right manner and everyone will know that this is a person we must never trust in particular circumstances so because she allowed her rapists to go around and create more victims remember a rapist is never satisfied with the victim he have just raped he has a desire to go on and create more victims so then i realize there are four means by which a person could anger the most high so bad that he withdraw his spirit from them and devils, demons, and evil spirits will occupy them. People. Then it all start making sense. It all start making sense. Oh, I said to myself, that is why the Caucasians community in their judicial system, in their legislative system, have been so actively incarcerating Israelite men for a lengthy prison sentence for minor offenses. That is why there is such a discrepancy between the arrests prosecution, conviction, and sentencing between members of the Israelite community and members of the Caucasians community. Because it was their intention to incarcerate the Israelite man and in his ignorance and deprive him from sexual intercourse for lengthy periods of time, and he will now go and have sexual intercourse with a man with one of his own gender. What happens when he does that? The spirit of the Most High leaves him. Devils, demons, and evil spirits now possess him. And then it starts tying together. Then I start realizing, oh, that is why the Caucasian community were instrumental in creating Planned Parenthood and scattered them in all of the minorities community in this the United States, in England and France and in the third world countries so that our women can foolishly take the advice and the counsel of the people who the most I say he hates and he will hate forever. That says, the trial that you are carrying is going to affect your life. It's going to hamper your progress. You need to abort this trial. 
And we are going to do it for free. Nothing in the world is free. Everything comes with a high price. And then it all starts clicking again. So that is why during slavery, the slave owner's community saw it fit to rape our women, our men, and our children. Our men were too afraid or too ashamed to say that they were buggered. Our women were too ashamed to cry rape. And they all became slaves. And that is why they implemented the system that is called buck breaking. Where they use a strong black man to sodomize another man who was restrained because they were enticing those men who were raped into now inflicting the same rape upon a brother. Remember people, if you being a man were raped by another man it does not make you homosexual. It does not make you a homosexual. It does not take away the spirit of the Most High from you. But if you keep that man secret and allow one other person to be raped, then the Most High will hold you accountable for that victim because you refuse to sound the alarm. This is just the reality. And now as I tell you earlier, there are people who are able to manipulate demonic, evil spirits and devils and use them for their purpose. So, the people who controls the devil, the demon, or the spirit that now inhabits you can now do as the voodoo practitioner in Haiti does. Get a voodoo doll. Inflict any kind of pain on that voodoo doll. And that infliction of pain will be automatically transported to you. That is how they have re-enslaved the Israelites in California. That is how they have re-enslaved the Israelites in the United States. That is how they are now enslaving the Israelites in the third world countries. South America, Central America, the Caribbean, Africa. People. The re-enslavement of the Israelites is a true and frightening phenomena my people this is another thing happened to me have you ever wondered why Malcolm X turned against his teacher the honorable Elijah Muhammad and betray his teacher to the white community. Why? The life story of Malcolm X 
show that Malcolm X was involved in homosexuality even before he was incarcerated. There are people who says that they had homosexual intercourse with Malcolm X. So even when Malcolm X was going about speaking about the goodness, the grace of Allah and championing the cause of the black or the Israelite community, he was a reprobate. The spirit of the Most High did not deal with him. That is why his masters found it so easy to get him to betray the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because he was a slave, he was a reprobate. He had a master who controlled him. And this is just the fact. Whether you love Malcolm X or not, this is just the simple fact. Have you ever wondered why the black, the black elite of the 50s and 60s, those who are part of the Renaissance, fight against Marcus Garvey so hard when Marcus Garvey was trying his best to rally the black community, to give the black community hope? Why did the black elite in this, the United States of America, fought against Marcus Garvey so hard? Why did the FBI find it so easy to find a black man who should be championing the cause of Marcus Garvey to go into Marcus Garvey camp, infiltrate Marcus Garvey personal counsel and give Marcus Garvey advice that will see him losing a lot of his followers money that made an advertisement with such a flaw that Marcus Garvey can be arrested and charged on the federal level for mail fraud. Today, even after a black president has served a time, Marcus Garvey is still a convicted federal felon. Men and women of different race, of different gender, of different ethnic group have did worse crimes than Marcus Garvey and were given the opportunity to have their criminal record wiped clean. They would not do that because Marcus Garvey did not depend on the Caucasian community to build his movement. He depend on the desire of black men and women who were hard working men and women who had a vision of better for, the, for their children and could not see how that vision will be realized. Marcus Garvey tried to realize that vision. But the black American betrayed him because those people were all slaves. They had big education, degrees, notoriety, but they were all slaves. People. In California here. Anytime I go to the park to pray, the Caucasians sends people i pray my afternoon prayer is two to two and a half hours the caucasians community sends people to watch me to see everything that i do everywhere i go there are people who are watching me 
They want to know what I do, where I go, who I speak to, everything that I do. People, they sit and shift to watch me when I pray. And I am proud if they did not participate in homosexuality and they would have sought the scriptures. And be faithful to God instead of spending the time they should be spending with their wives and their families or making money. They would have someone watching them, but they have to watch me. People, believe it or not, if you don't spend time in prayer and Bible study and doing the most high will for your life these people are going to enslave you and the same time that you dedicate to doing nothing the same time that you refuse to dedicate to prayer and bible study you will spend that time watching a faithful man like me praying and reading the whole scriptures the choice is yours. You will not have a choice in the matter. You cannot say you, you are busy. You cannot say your wife needs you when they call you. You cannot say my child needs me when they call you. You cannot say you have more important things to do because you are a slave. They will get you up because they will inflict great pain, torment, and agony upon you. And those pain is the only motivator you need to get up and do what they tell you to do. When they tell you to do it, how they tell you to do it. For people, spend your time on your knees. Spend your time praying. Spend your time searching the scriptures. Ask the Most High for guidance when you search the scriptures. Because the, those time that you refuse to dedicate to the Most High and get the strength and the guidance that you need to see it through all of the calamity of life. That same time that you are too busy to pray, you will have to spend that time doing things on behalf of someone who have enslaved you doing something else you don't want to do you did not want to do you don't care to do does not benefit you but you have to do it anyway people those slaves with caucasians spouses do you know how many spouses caucasian wife who brought their husbands, gave them a phone with a program in it to interfere with my videos, to interfere with the editing of my videos, to prevent me from posting videos so that you can see it. I see it every day. All I does is laugh and shake my head. The price to lose Yes, freedom is too high for anyone to pay. That is why when I first came to California, they were instrumental in trying to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to induce me into homosexuality. People, I'd rather die than to become a homosexual. They try to starve me in this place so that I will succumb and submit to them. People, I'd rather die than to become a homosexual. Do you know how many white husbands I see bring their black wives 
hand them an iPad or an iPhone, instruct them to interfere with my video, to interfere with my editing, to hamper my ability to post a video because they have to show that they are loyal to the white community and not to the black community. People, when a man becomes a slave, he is no longer your friend because he will only befriend you until his master says, it is time to betray him. That betrayal comes in the same manner as the gang betray each other and shoot and kills each other. Not because they want to, but because they have to. Because that is the instruction of their white masters. Another thing we have to remember. When the Israelites were enslaved, every Edomite nation, every white nation experienced prosperity. As soon as we were emancipated, or so-called emancipated. All of the white community, their economy comes shaky. Greece, bankrupt. America, depression, recession, after depression and recession. One after one. Their economy is no longer stable. The British economy is so unstable that they had to draw in a union with the other European countries. Still, their economy was still shaky. So now they're fighting for Brexit. They really believe, they honestly believe, because they don't know better, that if they re-enslave the Israelites, things will go back to the 15, 16, 17, and most of the 18th century, while all, where all of the white countries experienced economic prosperity. The citizens lived well, they ate well, they slept well, and they exploit the Israelite men and women. People, there is A movement in this world to re-enslave the Israelites. Since I come to California, since I came to California, I have not seen an Israelite man or an Israelite woman who is not a slave. I have not seen a Mexican man or a Mexican woman who is not a slave. I have not seen an Asian woman or an Asian man who is not a slave. I have seen many white people who are inferior in intellect, who are inferior in morals, who are inferior in their occupation are put to supervise these if you go to Grand Park right now you will see a white homeless man there his name is um Rick I think he has many slaves many slaves who must report to him every day strong healthy black men strong healthy black men is a white homeless guy that pushes around a red shopping cart with things in it even the homeless caucasians have slave in california here the Israelite people, they only are aggressive to other Israelites. They can't be aggressive to the Mexicans, 
because the Mexicans are favored over them. They cannot be aggressive to the Caucasians because when they are aggressive to the Caucasians, they are punished. This tied back into the whole black against black violence. The black against black violence is the slaves fighting against slaves on the instructions of their, ma their masters, their white masters. The black against black violence is just slaves. Men and women who participate in homosexuality, who partook in abortion, who were raped and kept their rape silence. All of those preachers are slaves. That's why they cannot speak with this authority because they have a master who will punish them anytime they get out of line. Anytime you try to prevent a man, a son, a woman, or a daughter of the most high from becoming a slave you will be punished people this is the reality whether you like it or not this is the most the words of the most high that which he have given to me these are the words you will never hear utter i know listen to me Majority of the men that I know was either raped and kept it quiet or partook in homosexuality. The majority of the women I knew, I know, were raped and kept it quiet, had an abortion. Most of the people that I am familiar with are slaves. I know that. They don't want me to speak these things, but I cannot save a slave in this kind of slavery. My words is to ensure those who have not yet partook in homosexuality, those who have not yet had an abortion, those who were not yet raped and kept it quiet to ensure that they don't do the same thing. My obligation is not to you who are now a reprobate. I don't care about your opinion of me. I don't care whether you share my video or not. I don't care whether you hang around and listen to this video or not. This video is not really dedicated to you. This video is dedicated to someone who have not been raped someone who have not partook in homosexuality and someone who have not lift up the hands of violence against their unborn child i don't care to be the friend of a homosexual once i know a person is homosexual once i see it in them my friendship and acquaintances with them is done. I do not care to be friends with reprobates. Once I understand that you are a reprobate, my friendship, my friendship with you is over. And I can see the signs on their, on their person. Because these things leave visible signs, visible signs that the servant of the Most High can see because I know my friendship with you is with you is worth nothing why because you are going to betray me the first opportunity your master tell you to betray me my friendship with you is worth nothing because you cannot help me to make it into the kingdom you'll only try to lead me away from the kingdom my friendship for you is worth nothing 
because you do not have what it takes to join me in the kingdom of the Most High. People, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. These are serious times. I personally fear no one. I know I serve an omnipotent God who is omnipresence. He's everywhere. A God who is willing to protect me against all odds. In the same way, my God protects protected Abraham from the fire when Nimrod cast him into the fire in the same way my God protected Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego from the furnace when Nebuchadnezzar cast him into the furnace in the same way my God protected Daniel when he was cast into the lion's den in the same way my God, the Supreme Creator, Yahweh, give David the skill, the courage, the authority to destroy Goliath. It's the same way. My God will, can, and forever take care of me, especially when I'm faithful. That is why I fear no man. All great supplements of the most high. As I speak to your people, I ask if anything that I said in the course of my discourse caused confusion among anyone. Please, my father, send your Holy Spirit with my word. Let your Holy Spirit lend clarity where I would have lent confusion. In Yahushua's name I see. Let it be done for something. People, listen to the man for